All right, I think we are live. Give me one second, guys, and I'll bring you guys out for Seven Figure Friday. Man, we have something very, very, very special for you guys today on Seven Figure Friday. So just one second. All right, my friends, welcome to Seven Figure Figure Friday. I'm your host, Ryan McMorris with Intentional Lifestyle, where we help home business owners truly create the lifestyle of their dreams by building financial and time and freedom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know what time it is, whether you're watching the replay or you're watching live, this is Seven Figure Friday, where we find what's working now from seven figure earners in the home-based business industry. The people that have gone out, they've done the work, they've, they've developed the relationship, they've built the team, and they added that extra comma to their check. You know we are here today, and I have a special special guest and I think at least like 40 people have already popped on because they're waiting because the beautiful the magnificent the awesome the amazing the just the oh my goodness can I ah Lisa Grossman is here with us today Woo, man this is gonna be a good one for you today Lisa I just want to say thank you <laughs> so I am thrilled to be here and uh for the audience that's watching in, it is a crazy day for me. I fly out to Hong Kong tonight and I've been training with workers all day because everything breaks the day you leave. So <laughs> this is so exciting to be able to stop this day of nuts to just hook up with some friends and talk about the things that we love and the things that excite us and the things that make the days of eh so worthwhile. Right, right. Well, hey, we appreciate you being here. Um I I'm just so happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I know everybody is pumped up because they, I mean, uh, man, it's Lisa Grossman. So um, let me, first of all, just say thank you. Just extend my gratitude to you, uh, my good friend, because you are a pioneer. Uh, you are amazing. You're a legend in this industry. You're a legend in the industry of just women and people, regardless uh, on being on this planet. You're amazing. Um, I, I just have to say thank you for so much that you do for me and this industry uh, and just taking your time. Um, I know you got to fly out today, so, uh, you know, we won't no, take too much. Want, until we bore them to tears, which won't take long, but as long as they're here, I'm here. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. We appreciate you because um, I spelled her name right. So we get a little more time today, guys. So yeah, extra time for spelling the name correctly and extra time for being you. Yeah, see, 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 you got to do it, guys. So um, feel free to press the share button, guys. Um, let us know if you shared. Uh, say hey to Lisa and be sure to send her a message too. find her on Facebook. Lisa Fader Grossman, send her a message. Um, say thank you. Give her a, a GIF hug. Do something. Uh, send her some love. Send her some candy, some flowers. She made, she's going to be in Hong no Kong. Candy. No, We're losing weight. No candy. No candy. <laughs> Matt, no candy, no candy, but maybe uh, a protein bar. I don't know, whatever. But um, guys, let me tell you something about Lisa. If you don't know who Lisa is, I'm going to recommend you to a psychologist of our choosing. And you can therefore get under the rock that you were living. Okay. So um, if you have no idea who Lisa Grossman, I will say this, Lisa, out of every seven figure Friday guest, and we posted all over, at least one person has said, I have to Google who that is. Not one person said, oh, let me go find out who Lisa Grossman is. Like, right. That's cool. Everybody, so that's knows. Nice. Everybody knows who Lisa Grossman is. So, mm. uh, guys, she's built teams. Now, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure if the numbers are right, you've built teams in the millions before, right? I had one team that was about 1.2 million, a couple over a quarter of a million. And I haven't built that many over the years. So, you know. That's heavy stuff, my friends. Guys, she is an expert in the home business industry, expert at duplication, expert at leadership, uh, growth. Um, I mean, if... I should say I did that without the aid of the internet, but with the aid of China, because China kind of equalizes the internet. You know, 70,000 people here, about 700,000 you get. <laughs> China is, a, China is the, the... A lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people looking for opportunity, a lot of people that appreciate opportunity well that's awesome that is absolutely amazing um so let me just tell you uh, uh, you know i want to say thank you. you know we talked about this a little before we came out but um i met you two years ago at an event okay hint hint all right obviously um i met you at an event we ran into each other and um 
I was good friends. I'm good still. I'm still actually good friends with Ron Gilock. You know, Ron, he's actually going to be the minister at our wedding. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, uh, so he's going to be marrying us. <laughs> um, but I was kind of following Ron around this event. Like, you know, Ron knew his way around. This was actually one of my first events. So I'm like, kind of like puppy dog and Ron and Ron finds you and you didn't, you know, you didn't say, Hey, like, I know Ron, I don't know you get out of here, kid. But I think I, what I don't you think did we was, before that event. <laughs> Do what? I don't think we had met much before that event, Ron and I. We had, we had, we had. And this is my first time meeting you. And and well, not him. I don't think I met him much before. Oh, much no, before. no, no, Ron. Okay, okay. So, so Ron finds Lisa, and I'm just kind of puppy dog and Ron, and she pulls out her notebook and starts talking. I'm just listening, and you know, I was able to catch her again before we went into the event the next day outside of the pool. And, you know, she pulls me aside and she just starts just unloading just just knowledge and expertise. And I'm like just soaking in. I literally for a moment, I thought my head was going to explode. and I was going to have to sue her, but it didn't explode. I'm still here. And I just love you for what you shared with me that day, because it's impacted over the last two and a half years. You know, we talked about I didn't even have the money to get a flight for that event. I actually didn't even have a hotel. Um at that event, I found a friend to stay with. And you were there. Everybody who's listening you need to write down not the part about he didn't have any money or he didn't have a way to get there because that's life. Right. He was there anyway, which might have something to do with the fact that he sits where he sits today. I'm just thinking. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. But Could be. Success leaves clues. It, right, right. And I'm telling you guys, like, I mean, I, I made it to that event. And for eight hours I, on my way home, I just sat and thought about what you what you talked about. And um, and over the last you know two years, I've just sat and implemented what you talked about. I've done videos over and over and over again about the things that you shared in that one moment. Um, and I just appreciate it. I mean, it, I, I cannot share the gratitude that I have um, literally for that maybe 20 minutes that, I, that that was two years ago. Well, I'm glad they were an impactful 20 minutes because, you know, I certainly remember you and have watched your rise um, with a big smile on my face. I love you. There's nothing that gives you more gratification in the space that we're in than seeing people win and win for the first time. Every time somebody comes and wins who hasn't won before, every person who says it doesn't work gets loses one more tooth. And I live for the day when the people saying it doesn't work are like toothless because nobody listens to toothless people. <laughs> right. No, I mean, you're right. I mean, and it's, and it's just, um, it's amazing. And you're always in the right place at the right time. And, um, and so I appreciate you for that. So uh, I do remember because we had a VIP day at that event that was pretty, um, pretty amazing. And you told pieces of your story that I know, Maybe a lot of people don't know. I know you kind of told some things before you got into network marketing, how you got into network marketing, um, you know, kind of your rise. I mean, I know you've, you've hit, you know, over what, like $50 million over the years. Oh, God, no. No, 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 um, no. I'm a, I'm a 10 million. In commissions, I'm a 10 million plus earner in network marketing. That's it, um, that's it, that's it. You know, but you know, I'm a big believer, and I know that people, you know, stories get, but I'm a big believer in, you know, just keeping the numbers what they are, because right. if the truth isn't good enough to sell a story, tell a different story. But I also know that people tend to take them and jump them up. And, and honestly, um, I've done really well. And I'm more proud of the fact that I can point to other people that I've worked with over the years that have also done really well. And again, right. that's the, the big gratification. People that have done better than me that came in after me that I work with, which is really the most exciting thing. Man, that's huge. And, you know, we're going to talk about that because, you know, this 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 talk is probably going to, you know, kind of make its way towards culture duplication, that kind of thing and creating leaders. Uh, and, you know, have the industry is about creating these success stories. Um, so kind of tell us, can you tell us how you kind of got started? And I know well, I you two phases of my network marketing career and the story can get drawn out. So I'm going to try to keep it to highlights. But for those of you that want to hear the whole thing, Eric Worries interviewed me on it twice. Everybody has, you can just Google and it'll come up in audio and written. I mean, it's been all over the place. But right. the first time I was introduced to network marketing, it was textbook. Relative calls you on the phone, sounding insane. Oh my God, I'm going to get rich. Blah, blah, blah. Can I come over? And the eyes are rolling. 
And she came over, hooked up a water filter to my sink. And my initial thought was, you're going to be a plumber and get rich? What are you doing? I mean, and then she says, you know, makes this commitment. You're going to use this for a week. Just the water from here. Make the orange juice. Feed the cats only this water. Use this water with everything. Okay. And I will say that after a week, when she came back, the water was better. The orange juice tasted better. If you gave the cat the tap water again, they, she pushed up her nose and she didn't want it anymore. So fantastic product. And knowing nothing about network marketing, I was very focused on the product and thinking this product is something. And I said, well, how much is one of these? And she said, you know, $179 and it works for three years. And I thought, well, what a great deal. And I said, well, how much money do you make? And she said, well, right now I get $120. So it's 59, but I can make all the way up to like $109. And I'm sitting there looking at it going $1 million divided by $109. I'm like, Dallas is pretty big, but you have to go to hook us up in a lot of sinks. And, you know, is so you have all of Dallas? And she's like, oh, no, anybody can do it anywhere they want. And I'm like, uh-huh. You know? <laughs> I'm like, well, I'll buy one. And I'm like, but I'm not really understanding why you're so excited about this. Because, you know, to me, it looked like a lot of time. And here she made 59 whole dollars. And three years from now, I'm going to buy another one, which didn't really look like millions right. to me. She says, oh, you right. have to watch the video. And I watched the video. And the video made a very compelling story. Remember, folks, this is 30 years ago. And it's talking about the bottled water industry just a small shelf in the grocery store, but someday, one day, it's going to take up a whole aisle. Well, I never thought that would happen, but just go to the grocery store today. So it was kind of pathetic. And it's dollars per bottle, and this is pennies per bottle, and won't it do great? And I'm like, okay, but I'm still not getting it. She puts me on the phone with somebody, three-way, and he's telling me how he went broke, was a millionaire who went broke in the real estate business, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and now you sell plastic water filters. Okay. He, and, I, and I'm dismissing it. And he says, and I made, I made about $33,000 last month. Well, this is 1988, 80, early 89. And I'm like, $33,000, which was money back then, mind you, um, right, right. in the dark ages. <laughs> I'm like, listen, he's going, well, how'd you do that? He says, you have to go to the meeting. So they shipped me off to the meeting. I go to this meeting at the Richardson Civic Center, and this was 30 years ago. So network marketing as we knew it was tree huggers in California taking lotions, potions, and pills, singing Kumbaya, and apparently crazy people who lost all their money in real estate selling water filters. That's <laughs> right. So I go to this meeting, and I'm looking around the room and thinking, if I see anybody I know, they won't want to admit they were here either. Should be pretty safe. And I sit. And it goes on and on and on. And people are drawing circles on the board and it's making no sense to you whatsoever. And finally, mercifully, the thing is like over, I think, because people are start standing up. And she says, sit back down. We haven't done the best part yet. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's more. <laughs> and all these people line up and go to the front of the room and they start telling their stories, their testimonials, and about how much money they're making, which you could do back then, and showing checks. And as I'm listening, I'm just flabbergasted one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. And they're talking about traveling and having fun. And I'm going, wow. So when it's over, I go to the payphone in the lobby, see how I'm dating myself. And I call my <laughs> husband and he says, how bad was it? And I said, oh my gosh, Steve, it was even worse than you could possibly imagine, except for one thing. And he said, what? I said, these people are dumber than us. They're uglier than we are. They're making more money and they're certainly having more fun. And he says, you don't really want to do this. And I'm like, I think I do. And he says, well, fine. Just don't let anybody we know know. Well, that's not exactly how network marketing works, but I agree. <laughs> and I got in it and I did what she did. I went out and I hooked up water filters and I grew very fast, but I was eminently unduplicable because when I saw the comp plan, and I wanted to be this one. You know, you always want to be, your eyes are on the top. How do I get there? And you had five of these, who had five of those, who had five of those. And I just started building it. You'll go here and you'll go here. Because to me, it was like a being a brownie. You know, when you're a boy scout or brownie, you want your patch. I wanted to have all the patches. So I built a right. paper empire. I made myself the issue. I was eminently not duplicable. 
Um, I was constantly explaining to people, no, this isn't a stock. You're not just, you know, I'm working. It's not like you following a tip that I gave you. It's net working, not net investing, not net sitting, not net Lisa's going to do it for you. <laughs> so I got the pin, but it was like a paper empire because it imploded upon itself very quickly. And from that, I decided I could turn 50, which I sponsored you no know, very quickly, 50 people into 500, at which point it was all about me and I could not manage the growth or the education um, no leadership, no understanding. Uh, just a bunch of people who thought they were going to get rich because they had 40 water filters in their house. Um, I then had to learn how to move, turn five into 5,000. And that was the beginning of the education of the turn. So I can honestly tell you that my first six months as it was working, but not working, I went from being fascinated by network marketing to hating it with a passion. I hated it so much because I don't like things I can't do well. And, not, and I was go big or go home. And I was failing miserably looking good, but I don't like to quit things, you know, a failure. So I had a master plan. I was going to get to that. I was going to figure it out and I was going to get to the top because then when I quit, it would be because I didn't like it. Not because I couldn't cut it. Right. Right. Here and here I fell madly in love because I began to understand what it really was because it's so much more than what we think it is when we see it. And the number one thing you start to realize is there's a lot of ways to go make $10,000 a month, which was the magic number back then. Today, I'll say there's a lot of ways to make a million dollars a year if you're smart and go-getter. But there's not that many ways that you can do it by going out and actually teaching people to be better than you, hoping that they are, and trying to improve every situation you walk in and leave it better than you found it. So it went on great. It was a part-time thing for me. It was my escape from my family business, which takes me to chapter two, because my family business was a hell on earth working for it. I got suckered in family. How do you say no? Learn if you don't know how, but I hadn't. Um, and it culminated after years of not liking it in indictments from the federal government toward my family and them on my doorstep saying, you know, we don't want you. You really, you know, you were young. You, we just want you to testify against your mother. <laughs> I come from a tribe. I'd have been better off going to South Pago Pago, changing my name and picking bananas for my future. So I said, no, um, they indicted my husband who really was guilty of marrying the wrong girl to put pressure on me. I still said no. And in the end, it was the federal government versus me. And I cut a deal with the federal government and I served 12 months, 12 days in a federal prison camp. Nothing to do with network marketing for those of you who are listening, for those of you that are listening. And when I finished that experience, and there's a lot of things that happened in that experience where I did a lot of personal growth and came to a lot of realizations. You can go watch the tape, the video for that. But at the end of that, when I came home, I had to find something to do. Right. And you know, a lot of people say, I can't do this. And I don't want my friends. Oh, I was the only one on my block that had a convicted felon on their resume. And I never liked working for other people anyway. So I came back to network marketing sort of as a salvation. And while I had learned how to build a network marketing business, my real talent was understanding the business of network marketing. So I called so many of the friends I made over the years and said, look, this is the situation I'm in. Nobody tells your sins like you. I can help your company. I can fix your comp plan. I can train your people. I can help with your culture, whatever it is, because I understood the business and people stepped up. They stepped up to help me. And in the course of that, that process, a company that I was kind of helping some friends, they said, you know, do you want to go out and build it? Nobody's really excited about this. And I said, well, sure. And that was in 19, late, late 1990. And we launched the company in 1991. And I made $1.2 million nice. because I, you know, everybody wants your, what's your motivation? Mine was not being evicted, making sure my kids could eat. And it's amazing the things you can do when you have no choice because everybody says, oh, how would you do that? Well, trust and believe had there been a box that was hiding under your bed and somebody's going to do it for me, I would have checked it 10 times and mailed it with extra, extra, you know, extra stamps to make sure it got ahead of everybody else's, but there was no such <laughs> It was go out and do it and focus on that. And I don't think you'll ever, no matter, you can't force yourself into the focus that life will put you in. And life put me in a focused position. 
And that, that took me around the world. It took me to Asia for four years. And it made me truly be really begin to appreciate how incredible this industry is, this profession is. This space, I believe, is the last frontier. I used to say of the American dream. I was raised on the American dream only to be slapped silly when I traveled the world and realized that this is a global dream, a global dream that people around the globe appreciate more today than many of us in America. And there's nothing that is more fair, although people don't realize it, that cares right. less about where you came from and more about what you're willing to do and allows you the ability to grow that and invest in people than this. You can go out on the internet and make a lot of money. There's a lot of things you can do from home today, but to have the impact on the on as many people, <coughs> I've never found anything else. So here I am 30 years later, suffering from TB. That's true believerism for those of you that wonder what that's <laughs> And I love it now more than I ever did. I'm deadly serious about it today, much more so than I ever was. And yet I'm having more fun with it than I ever did in my life. So who knows? That's awesome. That's still awesome. a student, still learning. That's awesome. I mean, you've done again. I mean, that story, I, I remember my first time hearing that story and I'm sitting there like, what? Like that, that's the lady that I just talked to about eight hours ago. Like what? I mean, uh, such an amazing story on, on, you know, your journey through the industry. And, um, you know, I, I know the things that you touched on that were, you know what, I wasn't duplicable. I wasn't, I wasn't duplicable. And wow. if you're, you know, I've been there before too, you know, where I've had big teams kind of fall off and you're like, ah, damn it. I was the, I was the one doing everything. That's why. And, um, you know, it, I, I want you to share something if you can, the, the thing that we talked about in terms of, uh, I will help you build your business and kind of bringing people through that process and how it, because, you know, you said if you do things wrong, you will end up hating what you're doing. I mean, if you do things wrong, um, you can end up kind of hating your life in network marketing, but you've been able to do things right. You know, I, I remember a conversation we had a, a, about a month ago. You said, Hey, I did some stuff right. And I'm still making money on stuff. I haven't even promoted in decades, like, because you do it right. You know, so can you share kind of that? that? Yeah, let's work backwards. And I think that'll okay. help. Okay, cool, uh, cool, cool. First off, in the real world, you get paid for results. Right. Results. And if you don't get the results, you will get fired. Yes. And network marketing, the results are a function of the process. So it took me a long time to learn this. But if you marry the perfect process and you divorce yourself from the results, your outcomes will be assured. Now, do any of us have the perfect process? No, that's why I put the word in there because it's right. marry the process, divorce the results. But if, you're, if your process is wrong, then, you're not gonna, then it's gonna yield the wrong results. So, but if the results are not what we want, we always go back to the process and improve the process to affect the results. So people get too hung up on results because you can't change the results unless you fix the process right. in anything. If you're baking a cake and the cake needs baking powder and you don't put it in, you can repeat the cake, bake, you can repeat the recipe a hundred times. And if a hundred times you don't put the baking powder in, a hundred times you're going to get a bad cake. So it's <laughs> only in the process of putting it together that you can fix the result. Right. So get the results. Process is how we do it. System is how you implement the process. And where a lot of people get confused is they think the system is the process. So if you might send somebody an email and I might make somebody a phone call and somebody else might be doing a video that gets somebody to call them. But if we're all asking the same question, it doesn't matter how we systemize it. The process is number one, ask this question. I don't care if you're selling, sending smoke signals. You know, or if you're drawing in the sand because you're in Papua New Guinea and that's how they do things. It's what's the, are you following the right process? Then systemize it however you're comfortable. So as I started to learn network marketing, I realized it's not about having all the answers. It's about asking the right questions that will yield you to what you really want. So go to specificity. 
People that are successful in life, they deal in specifics. They don't ask a bunch of questions to overwhelm themselves. They ask the next question and the next question and the next question. And the more specific you are, the better your picture is of what you're trying to create. It, what you want to get to, you know, kids, we go buy them those color by number pictures, uh, you know, all, color all the number one lines with blue and all the number three lines with red. And when it's done, it's a perfect picture. And you can't see that there were numbers there. That's what right. you want to get your plan down to if you can. Color by numbers. And the more specific your questions, the more that the picture is articulated and clear. Because we don't get what we want in life. We get what we picture. And if the picture is vague, the results are murky and nobody's happy. If you're not communicating well with somebody on your team, it's because too much, there's no accountability because where there is vagueness, there is misunderstanding, where there is misunderstanding, who can be held accountable? Everybody's to blame, so nobody's responsible. Where there's specifics, you know who's responsible and they know the responsible at the very beginning. So what I realized is, if you want a successful business, I've seen an interview with Bill Gates. I think it was Bill Gates. Yes, it was Bill Gates. And he was talking about why it took him so many years to start the foundation. They asked him, did you want to start your foundation? Did you know you always wanted to know you wanted to do this? Or did this come to you later in life? And he said, it came to me later in life, but much earlier than when I actually got to do it. And they said, why is that? And he said, I wasn't thinking about an exit strategy. I wasn't thinking about a succession plan. It was always about me. He said, so I had to change the question that I asked myself so that Microsoft could thrive and I could go be a foundation. And the question was, how can I build this business so that it not only survives, but thrives without me? And I asked that question now, where did you go? Did you lose, did we lose you? Cody? Ryan? I am just looking at me. And I am the only one here. So maybe I need to rejoin this. Uh-oh. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't know if I'm still live or not, or if he fell off because he disappeared. So let me check with him on my phone. You're now all seeing, if you are all here, you are seeing that I am a techno idiot. Oh, it's me. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. All right, I don't know if I'm still here or not, but I'm gonna go with that I am because it shows that I'm still alive. So wish some of you could tell me. Anyway, so the question is, how do I build this business so that it not only thrives, but it not only survives, but thrives without me? In other words, building a business to irrelevancy. And once you get to the point that you are building the business to irrelevant, when you're thinking along those terms, the answer is leadership and only leadership. Ah, good, you're back. Was I there and you weren't, or you were there and I wasn't? I I somehow got knocked off, but you were Okay, still so they were all still seeing me. So I apologize, everybody who saw my confusion. I was kind of trying to continue, but I'm going to back up to where I was. We were talking okay, okay. about the question that Bill Gates asked himself was, how do I build this business so that it not only thrives, but survives without me? Not only survives, but thrives without me. Meaning, how do you build yourself to irrelevancy? Because if you want to build a legacy then it has to not be, you have to become irrelevant to it. If you're not asking that question, let's play it out in network marketing. If it's all about you, then your best case scenario, your best case scenario is the business will go on until you don't. And when you expire or die, the business dies with you. A less uplifting possibility is that you become incapacitated. And now the business cannot even survive to take care of you and your family because you are not there to run it and it is dependent upon you. So the most, so if you are starting from day one with every project saying, how do I build this business so that it survives and thrives without me? The only answer to that is leadership. You have to have a leadership development factory. Only answer. 
because leadership is the only thing that can take the place of your leadership. People that are as vested as you are, people that are as successful as you are, people hopefully that are better than you are. So you're going out and you're building your business with the intent to get people that you can, that know more than you know right now, that you can feed into everything that you know so that you are, they are better than you. Think of people as your outcome, your output. Your output is how many people can I leave better? So most people I found when I was working with them in network marketing, they would have all these people that had been through the process. Some said no, some said yes, some became customers, some became distributors, some did a little, some did a lot. But no matter what they had, they would come and they would say, I don't have the right people. And that wasn't the challenge. The challenge was they didn't know how to separate with whom they should be spending time and how much. And that is the reality. There's one of you. And with today's tools right now, more than ever, I don't know how many people we're talking to. I don't know how many people I looked ridiculous in front of when you fell off the thing, but it could be, we could have 10 people watching right now. We could have a hundred people watching right now and a thousand people that could watch it later. So that's one to 100 live to the infinite possibility of how many ever in replay. You can do that. Anybody can do that in group. One-on-one, -on -one, your time is limited. And here's reality of business life and network marketing in particular. 85% or 90, but we'll go with 85% of your production, your revenue is always going to come from 15% of your people. Um, which means that for every 20 people at every given level of winnowing out, think of grade school, junior high, high school, college, grad school. Every time you go into a new group of, that's sort of gone up one level, and you find 20 people, three of them are going to be doing 85% of your production and 17 are going to be doing the rest. That means that you have to be able to identify the three and work with them individually, put 85% of your effort with that 15% and the other 85% have to get 15% of your time. And when you do that in group and there's no guilt because people identify them for themselves to which group they belong based on their activities and their performance. What you have to do is objectively work with that and nothing else. How yes. do you do that? That's where people, what happens to so many people is they get lost in 17 land. Instead of working with the three, they chase the 17. They bother the 17. They nag at the 17 and they chase them right out of the business. When they would have been happily buying product, coming to events, maybe having an aha moment. We want people in the community because today, not today is not never. And I don't see the big picture right now is not, I'll never see it, but chase them out of the community and they'll never see it with you. So you let the 17 be the 17 and you focus on the three. How do you find them? It starts at the beginning with setting expectations properly because more people quit, more people are unhappy, more relationships are destroyed out of false or misplaced, misunderstood expectations, lack of specificity, lack of clarity than anything else. And we summed it down to seven words. And I want you to write down these seven words the way that I tell you to write them down. On the first line, I want you to write I. On the next, I'm sorry, I will help. On the first line, I want you to write, I will help. On the second line, I want you to write the word you, Y-O-U. And on the third line, I want you to write the word build your business. Seven words that will change your life, change your business. When you bring somebody new into the business or someone downline from you and you're the mentor that is somehow working with that person or you take on working with somebody who has stood up, stood out, raised their hand and you're working down in depth and you're going to lock arms with this person. You tell them the first thing we have to do is establish the working relationship and the ground rules between us. So everybody understands their roles and responsibilities. All business works when everybody understands their roles and responsibility. Can you imagine how screwed up a restaurant would be if the hostess tried, walked in one night and we said, okay, you're gonna cook and we're gonna take the chef and have him park the cars and we're gonna take the car parker guy and have him sit at the tables. Everybody's there and everybody's working but nobody's working in the right roles. I wouldn't wanna go to dinner there that night. Unless of course I was filming a comedy show in which case it might be interesting. So <laughs> you with somebody, you say, here's how it goes. And you write this sentence for them like that. I will help. Second line, you build your business. Um, oh, you're writing. This is so cool. See, oh, good. I didn't know you could do this. See, oh, he's doing it for you. So while he does that, I'm going to be amazed. 
You're doing this with Zoom, right? Yeah. I have this software and I didn't know I could do this. This is so cool, learning every day. Now, the fact that I can do this and me ever being able to do it are two vastly different things, but I'm going to give it the old college try. Okay. And that's a lesson in itself. <laughs> so what you sit down with somebody and you say, so here's the sentence. I will help you with your business. Let's talk about our jobs. Your job is everything that follows the letter U. You build your business. That's your job. Everything that follows the letter U. My job is everything that comes before the letter U. I will help you. And let me tell you the better way to start this. The first thing you ask somebody is, what's right there in the center of this diagram? You. It's your business. Your business. I will help you build your business, but it's your business. Your job is everything that follows the letter of follows you. You build your business. My job, I will help you. If you're not doing your job, I don't have one. You build your business. I help you. You don't build your business. Nothing for me to do. I don't build your business for you because if I'm going to build it for you, I don't need you. Does that make sense to everybody that's watching? Now, what happens with this is you say to somebody, every company, every business, every organization has a system, a protocol, a daily method of operation, a, a system of success, proven pathway to success. Let's say step one is making the list. We'll start with this. So I'll say, Ryan, you're going to make your list. When can you do it by? And this is just an example. I don't, whatever your step one is. And today's Friday. He says, Lisa, I can get that done by Monday. I don't care if he says Wednesday. I might question if it's too far off. But if he says Monday, I'll say, great. I'm going to pull out my book calendar. By the way, write this down. You, the, the best friend you have in business, not your upline, not your downline, not your coach, not your mentor. It's your calendar. Your calendar is your best friend in business. So I'm going to pull my calendar for Monday and say, so how about we get back together at two o'clock on Monday, we go over your list. He says, sure. I put it in the calendar. I call him on two, Monday, two o'clock. And I said, Ryan, you got your list. And he says, no, no problem. You know, something could have happened. Life happens. I'm like, well, did something happen? You know, and sometimes you hear, oh my God, someone was in an accident or something. Okay. But more often than not, well, you know, this one had softball and then we got to talk in and what? Well, okay, no problem. <laughs> when do you think you can get it done by? He says, Wednesday for sure. Now I'm going to pull out the book again and I'm going to say, Wednesday, what time? Write it down. We're going to get back together on Wednesday. If he has the list done, great. But let's say he doesn't. And I'm going to say, look, Ryan, this is your business, your business. I don't want to put pressure on you or tell you what to do. When you get it done, Call me, we'll schedule another appointment. I didn't kick him out of the book. He took himself out, We mm. right? If he calls me and he has it done, we'll schedule another appointment. Of course we will. But what I do at that time is I say, look, you know when the, you know that the, the getting started calls are on Saturday morning and the new team, uh, the new business building calls on Tuesday night and the doctor calls on Wednesday afternoon and the convention or the regionals a month from Saturday on you know, this date, got your tickets. And I move him into group because now these are all the group activities. And at any time that he wants, he can do the right things and get back in my book. But right now, everything that I've got under in my calendar that is group, conference call, go to event, da 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 that's where he is in my mind. That's where he's on that list to make sure he's aware. He's in that Facebook group. He put himself there. And all you're doing progressively through your entire business is seeing who chooses to stay in the book. And at different levels, different people will fade away and get to group. Not everybody wants what you want. Most people wish they were at the top of a company. They have no conception of what it is, how much work is involved, what it entails, what it involves. The people that are making monster money, outrageous amounts of money, there was a point in time when they were making really good money and they chose to continue working. That's how they got to the monster money. It doesn't go from 200,000 a year to a million dollars a year because you've got a bunch of people in place and it just runs away and happens. 
There's conscious <laughs> decisions to go get more training, get more coaching, be away from home more, go to more events, be on more airplanes, go invest in the people that are at 75,000 a year that want to get to the 250, which drives you up. And a lot of people decide, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to run. I'm going to keep maintain my business, keep my business, work local. That's okay. Perfectly acceptable. But you're looking for those that continue to choose. And as your group gets bigger, they will come from deeper and deeper in your organization because nobody ever got to the top with people they personally sponsored either. That's how you learn to work in depth. So that's the process and always working with the group, but always making sure that your book is filled with your 15%, which is an ever-changing group as the volume gets bigger and the group gets bigger. It's not necessarily the people that you started with unless they chose to keep running. And that is what you have to understand, you know, understand and remember and stay on top of. And if you do that, that's the simplest way to build a business up. Your calendar and spending time with the right people in your business and talking to the right people outside of your business about the possibility of somehow factoring into your business. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, I mean, this, this should stick with each and every one of you forever. Because again, when's the last time you've seen a, a jockey get off a horse? Oh, my joke. <laughs> <laughs> you want that story? <laughs> yeah, I'll let you tell it. I'll let you tell it. All right. <laughs> Um, when I actually first brought this to the public, it was a GoPro a couple of years ago and a horse had just won the triple crown and the okay. relationship when you first get started with a brand new person is much like a jockey and a horse. And when they're working in tandem perfectly, triple crowns can be won. And let's think about that. What's a horse's job when he, when, in that race? They run. A horse's job is to run, run, run fast, run hard, run to the finish line. Don't worry. What's a jockey's job? to steer the horse. I'll keep them off the rails, keep them away from getting bumped by other horses, keep them going straight, keep them from tripping. They steer them. Now, when a jockey and a horse are working that way, they can win Kentucky Derbies, Preaknesses, Triple Crowns. When was the last time you saw a jockey get off, a horse stop dead in the tracks, the jockey get off the horse, pick up the horse and carry it across the finish line? It doesn't work. It doesn't happen. You've never seen it. There's a reason for that. Boom, man, if the horse stops running, I can't do, I can't do my job. Nope. And if the horse stops running repeatedly, a jockey's going to go find another mount. Oof, man. You're not going to stand in the middle of a pasture with a horse that wants to eat grass and has given up and decided he ain't going to race anymore and say, stand there and say, but please, you have so <laughs> much potential. The races we could win together, run, 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 run. Eventually, he's going to find a horse that wants to run. Oh, that's awesome. That, that's, that's amazing stuff. Um, so uh, I know, I know you've, uh, we've, we've gone over our time. You just absolutely. Is this a screen share or is it something inside the Zoom? So um, all you do, because there's a whiteboard inside the Zoom. Okay, that's all I want to know. We want to bother you anymore. Okay, that's what I was asking. Okay. My lovely, my lovely fiance got me this, um, it's called Wacom, a Wacom thing. And it's got the magic pen. I love this thing. I love this thing. Cause if you ever do whiteboard presentations, um, I used to have to like have video up and then I'd have the whiteboard up, you know, and now you can just do it on the screen. It's amazing. I'm going to um, order one as soon as we get off. Now you said, did they want, you know, did they have questions or anything? Cause you said something about people in questions. So I don't want to like not. So, um, so what we'll do, let's take, um, let's take two questions from the, uh, from the crowd here. I can see the questions on Facebook live. So if you have a question for Lisa, um, well, what we'll do, what saying. Where is it? we'll pick, um, let me see, hold on. Let me share real with you, Lisa, real quick. One second. Um, that way you may be able to pop on live. Yeah, I'll turn off. I'll do it on my phone so I don't bring up the volume. I, I've learned how to do that. Okay, cool, cool. So you should have, you should be able to see it. But what we'll do is we'll take two questions. Okay, guys, uh, we'll, we'll take that. two questions. And what we'll do is um, we'll ask those questions and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. 
I know one of the questions that and I, we'll, we'll start with this one. We'll let the, we'll let the questions kind of come in, and then we'll pick. Um, how has social media changed your your eyes in network marketing? Like um, over the years, coming from you know being being in the industry for thirty years, how's the tool of network marketing kind of changed how you do things or how your team does things? Honestly, um, network marketing, human nature, you know, tactics and technology changes. Human nature never does. What I have found that tools today allow people to do is reach people more effectively, more efficiently, more economically than before. But that's a double-edged sword. If the message is great, how much faster you can grow. If the message is incorrect, you're just failing in technical or in front of a larger audience. So I don't think, I think if you feel strength, um, that technology is wonderful friend. I think sometimes it cripples people because if you're using technology to hide from people, it's not going to be serve you any better than hiding from people in the real world did. Also, I think that sometimes people become too dependent on it. So I think that what you need to ask yourself is this, if all the electricity went out and you had to pull out a napkin and do it by yourself one-on-one, could you? And as long as you could, it's awesome. Because being able to say the word, getting to a point where you can say the words yourself is always going to serve you well in your business. So I think that different people use different methodologies. It comes back to the process. I don't think the process has changed much. I think the way that people systemize it has changed dramatically. But I will tell you that what fascinates me is I still meet people today that tell me with all the tools that are available, how difficult um, it is. You know, right. I remember when we would get a conference call for an hour, it would be $300 and everybody would three-way people, three-way people, three-way people on and you couldn't hear it because it was only for a hundred lines. And today we can visually go around the world into every time zone for free. We can right. get on Skype and be translated by machines so that we can actively communicate with people in other languages and people are like, it's just too difficult. So people don't change. It's all what you make it. Capitalize on every opportunity and technology certainly can help you if you're willing to do that. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, I see it from, from people that are not so, uh, I guess, veterans in the industry that may be new. And then it's kind of like, you know, they have their thoughts and beliefs about it. And then we see it from veterans that think, oh, no, we can't do this online. It's not possible. And it's like, man, it's like you don't see how this tool it, you make it, you make it what it is. Do you know what I mean? And it's, um, it's, it's pretty, pretty special. Uh, what you can do with social media. I love when it's to do this, but I don't know that I'm doing anything any differently. I'm just using, I, I'm saying the same thing I would have said on a conference call 30 years ago. This is just a better conference. Yeah. Call. Yeah. 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 It's, it, I mean, it's literally the same thing. I think if we stop thinking that like, okay, I have to, you know, how, how do I do this offline? And then how do I do it online? It's like, it's really the same thing. I mean, shouldn't you learn the principles of, of just how to be yourself that? everywhere? Yeah, yeah, it's not it's nothing different. It's nothing different. Um, Alice, Alice had a question. If you were just starting building, what would you do first? First thing I would do, um, move to action. Move to action. I would ask a question and I would get people in front of third party tools. Don't make yourself the issue, you know, and you know, if I had product, I would I would go to my hot market and I would get them to support me and help me by buying a month's supply of my product. So I would be collecting stories, collecting data, creating my own story by getting my money back and having people that know, knew, loved, and cared about me and trusted me enough that they would try a product, use it, and give me their honest opinion, not expecting them to join my business, not wanting them to join my business because family can be pressure. And then I would go out and I would tell people, you know, I've... Um, what if I could show you a way? Always ask open-ended questions and drive people toward information. We're in, right. you are in the information sharing business. It's not about you. It's about them. And it's about connecting them to something that could possibly change your life. And in order to do that, right. you have to go out and make it about them and what they're looking for and be interested in them. So I would start by being interested in other people. And when I'm recruiting, it's three questions. Are you happy with where your life is at at the moment? And all the sub questions that follow, you know, the road you're on, taking you where you want to go. If nothing changes, are you going to like the outcome? And when most people tell you they're, and I don't ask people if they want to make more money, never, ever, ever. Cause it's not about money. It's about satisfaction and fulfillment. 
And the next question is, when they say no, because they usually do, do you have a plan to change it? And you know they don't have a plan because if they had a plan, they'd be working their plan. They would be talking to you, I don't happy they are. But you want them to connect <laughs> the thoughts. Not happy with where I'm going, no plan to change it. And the third question I ask them is, would you like to see one? It's probably not for you, but if you, but if you see what I see, I think I could, the, together we could do something pretty special and it could, you know, change, get you some of the things in life you want, but aren't getting right now. And if you don't, that's okay too, because at least you're looking for a plan and everybody on the planet who is on a path they don't like with no plan to change it and is unhappy deserves to go out and find the plan that's right for them because everybody deserves to be happy, right? Yeah, I completely agree. And it's so simple. It's so simple, guys. So simple. Simplicity is um, the key. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got just the system. You don't buy the product. I mean, you said it yourself. You know, it's like the products are great, but it's like you put so much emphasis and focus on the products that you forget that, you know, hey, McDonald's has a shitty product and still sells the most burgers. <laughs> because they kept it. You know what? I would agree with you, but our kids – which is who they're, you know, I think every child is born with a, a McDonald's French fry gene because I've never met one kid around the world when they taste one doesn't want more. So there's something there. But here's what I will tell you. Here's a secret for all of you. Simplicity robs the story we want to tell ourselves about why things are the way they are of oxygen. That's why people complicate things. If they complicate it, their story lives on. Because almost anything that we are in, anywhere we are that we don't want to be, there's a simple way out of it. The steps are very simple. They're just all involving us doing things we're not comfortable doing. And if we let it get complicated, we can convince ourselves that we don't have to move. And if we get it simple, then we can come to the conclusion, well, all I really have to do is move and take action. Ooh, ick. Why aren't I doing that? Nobody wants to go there until they're ready. Mm, that's heavy. That's heavy. Um, so, so last thing, and then I'll, uh, we'll let you run because we know we got to go and uh, um, fly across the pond today. Um, so over the years, um, how, how have you, I know I'm sure there's things that have happened in your life, you know, sickness, tragedy. Um, Everybody's you know, got a story. I mean, right. How, how, how have you like been the person that like kept going, you know, when everyone's looking at you and still life happens to you as well. I mean, we're, you're still human. Um, how have you like overcome those things over the years? How have you stayed positive? How do you, how do you keep your energy up? That kind of thing for the person that's like, man, I'm going through it right now. Like, I don't know what tomorrow brings that kind of thing. Well, it comes back to what I said in the beginning. We don't get what we want. We get what we picture often to now, right now, day to day, I won't say that life sucks, but day-to-day -day life is pretty boring. I don't care what you're doing. You could be working on the rocket that's going to go to take man to Mars and populate the planet. But day-to-day, -to -day, putting together that rocket's probably circuitry and a lot of boring stuff. There aren't going to be that many days that are like, oh, my God, liftoff day. But you got to keep yourself focused on the prize. What's the picture that you're working at? See, right. most people fail in network marketing because they don't commit to the vision of what they're creating. What drives people and keeps them going is the vision of what they're creating. It's not about what's happening today. It's not about this one person. It's about what are we doing? You know, are we, you know, right. the question I always ask myself is knowing what I know today and knowing that almost all of it's going to change in 10 years is what I do every day allowing me to bring the, create my greatest impact for the largest number of people for their benefit. I believe that it is. And right. that's what keeps me going. If it was just about, if I do this, I'm going to make $50 today. I'd be like, okay, I'll make a hundred dollars tomorrow and take today off. Cause I don't feel like doing this. Today. <laughs> you know, but I can't get back time that I've wasted. You can always make more money. You can't make more time. So I guess my answer to that would be, understanding that time is your most valuable commodity and you don't know how much you have, don't squander it or waste it. And if you have a clear picture that is bigger than yourself and understand that's what a vision is. A vision is not something that should be able to be accomplished in your lifetime. No great vision is ever something that can be accomplished in your lifetime. The World Hunger Organization, what's their vision? To end world hunger. None of them believe that, when, that they're going to end world hunger, but they believe that every day their efforts get them closer. Well, if every day your efforts are getting you closer to a grand vision being realized, how many days can you afford to not move forward if it's not going to happen in your lifetime anyway? 
Can we afford to let it be put off 50 years? Because if everybody working on it wastes 10 days, how much time do we lose? And how many people are waiting for us to get there? You know, you are an important contribution to whatever cause, vision, mission you choose to orient yourself in for those of you that are watching. There is only one you and choose it. If you choose to take the talents, your, your, your talents and your, your fortitude and your vision and your ability to inspire someone else to do the same every day that you don't do that is your choice, but that's not just a choice for you to not do something today. I don't care if you don't go physically take action today, but this what you believe today, what your attitude is today, that's about you and everybody who you've chosen to be an inspiration to. And most of the people that are looking at you, you don't even know are watching. So always remember, it's not, it's how, what you believe to be true. And the eye, the, the prize that you're, the prize that you are focused on is what moves you forward. So the picture in your head, what you believe in your heart and the knowledge that you truly do make a difference when you show up, which means you truly do make a difference when you don't. Ooh. Uh, is there some type of mic to throw against a wall, maybe like light it on fire, um, slam it? Like, I'm a little passionate maybe... about this stuff. Can you tell? <laughs> uh, uh, smidgen, smidgen. Man, Lisa, um, I, I mean, you literally just like took this interview and just like, just what we said, just crushed it, put your foot in it, in, insert foot now. Wow. Um, thank you. Oof. Thank you so much for uh, My pleasure. coming on. Um, we want to wish you a very, very, very safe flight today. Um, man, man. I want to thank you for giving uh, some, you know, I know how valuable Ray's time is. I want to thank you for giving up some of it to me. And if I can ever be of service or if I can ever come back, it was fun. I'd love to do it. And thanks so much for having me. For sure, for sure, guys. Um, make sure to send Lisa some type of message, some type of like hug, something like send your gratitude, send your love, send your thoughts, your prayers, energy, everything you got. Make sure that you reach out to her today. Wish her a safe flight. Tell her thank you. Um, Rewatch this, and I would say probably the most, the the best way to say thank you is go out there and, and implement something that you, that you learned today. Like, like be the person that says, Hey, look, I listened to your interview two years ago and you know, my team grew by a thousand, 2000 or like, or it didn't even have to be about your, your business. Honestly, it could be about your life. You know, it could be about someone else's life. So reach out to her, uh, connect with her. Um, she is absolutely amazing. And just one of the, one of the pioneers and just most uh, beautiful people that we have on this planet and, and share in this industry. So uh, just thank you again, Lisa. Um, you can get guys, you can catch the replays uh, for every seven figure Friday. If you go to ILC intentional lifestyle creators, ILC university.com that's ILC university.com forward slash free. And uh, you can see every episode of seven figure Friday and uh, Lisa again, Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Okay, awesome. See you guys. Have an amazing day, guys. See you, Lisa.